to our 15th Bioelectrodynamics webinar. It's a great pleasure to have our speaker, Dr. Vinguen, here today with us. Before we start, let me give you some householding notes. Uh, this webinar is supported by the International Union of Radio Science, URSI, and also by the Engineering in Medicine and Biology chapter of the Czechoslovakia section of IEEE. I would like to keep ask to keep all um, attendees to have their videos switched off and be muted during the talk. And if you have any questions, please type them to the chat or we will, they will be responded after the lecture or raise your hand after the lecture and we, you, I can unmute you and you can ask the question yourself. So lecture will be recorded. And now it's my pleasure to give a short introduction of Dr. Wing Nguyen. He uh, received his PhD degree in physics in the University of Amsterdam. Uh, he was a postdoc at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and also senior, uh, he was a senior scientist at the United Kingdom facility at the Dutch Free Electron Laser for the infrared equipment. Then he later joined the faculty of the physics um, department, uh, he joined as a faculty of the physics department at Virginia Tech, and his current research is interest, which part of them he will present today, are in the optoelectronic materials for optical interconnects, for also in coherent optical control for quantum information processing, and uh, also in uh, ultra-fast dynamics, transition in quantum systems, and uh, the last but not least, the dynamics of hydration shells and biomolecules and ions in aqueous solutions brought by the terahertz spectroscopy. So, Dr. Wynn, the, the space is yours. Well, thank you so much, Mike. So, uh, I really appreciate for the invitation. And of course, first of all, I was so sorry about the delay time, the, the changing your time. So, is that we make a little bit delay for you? Uh, right. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you already know, um, right now I'm working at the uh, Virginia Tech Physics Department. And uh, I'm talking today, uh, one part of my research on the, with the way we're doing with the water and protein interaction and how we can learn about the interaction and how the function of biomolecule from the biologic, uh, from collective motion. And of course, uh, my research is not only one of those. So I, I see you have very nice center. So I would like to introduce, we also doing like uh, in uh, optical, optical electronic devices and we uh, get uh, developed some, uh, um, uh, like photo detectors for um, telescope from NASA, and one of them we used uh, we used uh, graphene because graphene has small band gap and high mobility carrier mobility, so that's very good for photo detectors. And of course, that's what we we're working on right now. And then the purpose we not develop in the visible range, we develop in mid infrared region that we can measure the temperature of the Earth, and we can talk, uh, we can explain or we can uh, figure out or the global warming issue right now. That's on the purpose from NASA uh, idea right now. And on top of that, we also uh, develop some kind of micro lasers and uh, quantum information device, uh, uh, quantum information uh, science or devices, what we're doing. So, but I'm not talking today, but I'm happy to talk with you if you wish to talk about that. And uh, today I'm talking only how we can learn from uh, the light and matter interaction. How we use uh, light to study the dynamic uh, protein DNA uh, in general. And then I, I, I can tell what we're doing right now here. And of course, as you know, light interact with material in a long range or the whole range of electromagnetic wave. And in the visible range, you can see the green leaf here. Uh, I think you can see a mouse I'm pointing or I change another mouse. Yes, we can see our mouse. Awesome. So you can see the green leaf and red apple here because it, uh, when light interact with the uh, electron and making electron jumping from one to another levels. And of course, when you will go low energy and then you can see the uh, vibration or, or a single atom inside big molecule. That's why we can tell how about the structure and dynamic of the molecule. But however, if you want to learn more about biological material or, or protein DNA uh, molecule, and then that's why we're talking collective motion because it's big, large motion. Uh, and um, that like, I tell you about function of biomolecule. I, I start, I show you here how hemoglobin work because the con uh, conformation the changes and making the capture oxygen or release oxygen from that or, or CO2 and bring the oxygen for the cell use. So that we focus on today, I'm talking about how the fine infrared or we're talking the terahertz spectroscopy, uh, terahertz uh, light interact with the biomolecule here. 
Right, so and then it's not only hemoglobin and also lysosome, and lysosome is the red, uh, in the white uh, area or white stuff of the chicken hen egg, for example. And this was a stuff that protects the egg. Why, when uh, protects the center of the egg, or the, the, and then you can put uh, the egg many uh, many day in the kitchen without any issue. Right, so and, uh, another I mentioned before uh, with the hemoglobin and also DNA is so important for that because the uh, function of DNA or the structure of, uh, of DNA also depending on the level of water uh, inside with the DNA. So what is so important? Definitely, no water, no living thing. I, I would like to mention about that. Right, so and then of course like come back with the DNA. So depending on the level of hydration of the water or hydration level here, you can get A, B, C and Z DNA. So that's very important. So that way we're working on how we can learn about that. And also another one, I, we're not talking today, of course, but uh, in general, it, uh, you can find from our publication. So what is the protein like disorder protein also? The disorders, we're talking IDP, into strongly structured, strongly depending on the level of water, right? So, so that was something we're working on. And, and that's why I'm just talking one part of research we focus on today. It means protein and water first, because protein have a structure by itself and have water how, on the surface. And, and, and how it works. So this was the motion of protein like lysosome I mentioned before, and it's very, very interesting. And many people focused on that for many years before us, before many years here, uh, ago. So you can see here from that 85, and, and uh, of course I can see uh, your uh, Markel, Professor uh, Andrea Markel already gave you one talk a few months ago. And she, and then all these people have done um, calculation, molecular, um, more, normal mode or molecular dynamics. And to predict what's going on with the motion of, or conf, uh, conformation of changes of biomolecule, and then why important for that and how we can learn from that. So, of course, it's uh, easy because we can uh, take a computer. No, I'm not talking easy, but I'm talking about is we can do it with a computer and of course we need a fast computer to work it out. That's why uh, many have done with the MD simulation, but we need to test it. Is it easy to do it or not? So let me explain for you because all biomolecules have only function in uh, the acute environment or with water, iron surround from that. But the problem is water is so strong absorption, right? So if you're talking of visible range, so you can see very low absorption here, I'm talking, you see a mountain pointing, a visible range, so it's very small, very low absorption, that's why allow you can uh, see through the water or can you can swim and so forth. And of course, uh, let, uh, only our little bit in the mid infrared, but still in this range from that. Right, so so that's why tell us about the the biological evolution on the Earth. Why we have a lot of water or, or the Earth with the water. So that was the work here tell tell the evolution from why human eye and also animal eye can see well, through the water. But however, look at the absorption of water in the terrestrial frequency or even mid infrared and far infrared and so forth. It really really strong. I'm talking one terahertz, so you can see many order. I'm talking here log scale, many order magnitude higher. So for example, one millimeter of water the attenuation about 10 to 18 uh, times or attenuation here. Okay, this is one example. Another example, I think you very you know very well about the microwave at home. You cook the food, you bring the water, put inside the microwave, wait for one or two minutes, and then the cup of water boiling. Or you can make a popcorn and make a lot of things with this. But the absorption of this one is about two gigahertz. Uh, uh, I mean, lower absorption, quite lower, but at two gigahertz frequency here, yeah. right? So it means water strong absorption is in this very difficult for us to measure the, the one I just mentioned before, very important about the collective motion of biomolecule. But this is one thing, right? I'm not talking more things. So I'm talking another one. If you want to learn the uh, light and matter interaction, you, learn two, you need to understand two things. The first one is absorption coefficient, which we all learn about that, know about that. The second one, we're talking about refractive index. Right? The refractive index of water is about, you can see here about nine, roughly pointing here, refractive index nine, and then about visible about 1.3. And it could be between at the terror frequency changing quickly from one from nine go to 1.3 uh, uh, from refractive index. Right. So if you learn only one information, may not 
clearly give you the whole story. So the way we need to know, we need to know this, we need both information, the refractive index and absorption coefficient from light and, and, and uh, matter interaction and of course with water included here in the story. And of course, water and biomolecule, right? And then that's why uh, people, it's strong absorption and many people have done before, of course, Andrea Maca, Cal, I cited her because she own the first person working on how to learn the interaction between the DNA or biomolecule in general with the, as a terahertz frequency. So this is uh, a frequency in wave number, but it converted about one terahertz or a few terahertz here. And of course, in the what, what is strong absorption, like I mentioned before, and of course the first thing we should do is just try to get rid of water. So that's why she started with dry samples and moisture sample here for DNA and, and other molecules. But of course this information is very useful, very, very useful to understand the biomolecule, the crystal line of uh, biomolecule. But however, the hydration information not included, right? This one I'm talking, we're living on the earth, so we need to know we need water. And of course, I mentioned, also want to mention, we need to drink two liters of water per day. Without that one, we can get some trouble, right? So, and of course, water is simple, right? Simple, very only one oxygen and two hydrogen atom here and making an electrical dipole moment from this molecule. And then, of course, when you form liquid water, we have hydrogen, hydrogen bond between them. And that's why making very nice lattice, uh, if you're talking of femtosecond time scale, and it looks like a nice crystal uh, material, femtosecond I'm talking about. And of course, when you have room temperature, all this one rotating, uh, we get energy from the, from, the, uh, from the room temperature energy. Right, so that's why we're working on here. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I started working here several years ago, and with the number of publications, you can check it. And then we learned that how lysosome interact with uh, the terahertz frequency, and how what is important about that. We learned about B, uh, BSA several years ago, uh, how about this biomolecule. And uh, last year, we had one publication in biophysics about DNA and water and how uh, structure has been changes. And also, we learned about the membrane, like uh, we start with a simple one, with the micelle, DPC micelle, inverse micelle, uh, and of course, even very simple one like water and sugar, like glycerol, how is water in glycerol interaction? And then uh, the one I just mentioned about the uh, IDP, intrinsic disorder protein, how we interact with this one, we just got a few months ago, working on this uh, uh, different kind of uh, the IDP proteins. And today, uh, and of course, because we do we're doing the different kind of material or different kind of protein, and then I today I'm talking one type of those. I'm talking about how uh, uh, cytochrome C and myoglobin uh, or hemoglobin, I call heme group uh, protein, and how it works with uh, in this frequency. And of course, uh, furthermore, yeah. So we're talking. We learn about how iron and water interaction, and we're uh, working on the, on the Hopmeister series right now. And uh, we, if you want to, if you're interested in any of those, I can talk about that. Right, so let me start with one of them. So start with the heme group, uh, heme uh, proteins. And then, uh, of course, in general, this is a big molecule. When they put big molecule inside water or aqueous solution, water have dipole moment, interact with the surface of biomolecule. And that's why you can put a pro it, uh, protein can dissolve inside the liquid water. And the water will form the first layer because it's some sort of like you say the red color here corresponding to higher potential, columbic potential interaction between the surface and water molecule and make this water molecule stuck there. And then, uh, and we call strong bow layers or tiny bow water. That's what we propose to work on that. But then outside, maybe weaker interaction uh, outside here or, or water have weaker interaction or some surface of the biomolecule weaker interaction uh, and then I group with the second one we're talking a loosely about water because can send a little bit of, uh, can send the potential but it's not strong like the first layer but it sends the, the colloidic potential of the surface of bi of biomolecule but weakly Right? So this we're talking intermediate or loosely bound water. And of course, further from that, you this water molecule don't see any what who, no no protein here at all. So so he, he just rotate by itself, relaxation by itself, no, no, don't see any presence of the protein or macromolecule in the solution. 
Right. So, and of course, we want to learn about the dynamic of biomolecules. So that's why I develop here at Virginia Tech, and of course, before I'm working at UC Santa Barbara. And then we de I developed two kinds of spectrometers. The first one, the megahertz to gigahertz spectroscopy. And this one, we can see, we can learn how water molecule rotate. It's like buck water, the one I'm talking here, and how strong interaction between the first in the uh, water uh, in uh, on the surface, the uh, strong layer or tiny bow layers and a weak layer here because we can have the technique to learn about that. And after that, we also high frequency. We're talking about terahertz spectroscopy. And with this one, we can learn the collective motion of the hybridic DNA, or be, I'm talking about protein in general. Right. So, and then of course, like I mentioned, I uh, uh, focus on, pro on protein, and then I focus on today about myoglobin, hemoglobin, or actually myoglobin for that. And I should talk also hemoglobin, but it lies with bi biomolecule. Right, so, and of course, like um, you, you all know about, that we're talking about terahertz gap and uh, the terahertz, the um, uh, terahertz radiation or the um, fine infrared region, right? So we have many uh, laser in the visible range or infrared range. We, but however, and also we have many laser like, uh, like microwave source, it's easy, it can make it right now. But in between this one for the, uh, for the microwave, we're talking electronic application, and this one we're talking about optical applications. And in between that, we're talking about boundary between electronic and optic application, and that's why leave uh, making it difficult to make the tail hook or fine infrared uh, region, uh, radiation. And of course, at the same time, the same thing at camera. So it means the camera and also the radiation is uh, under development right now in this range of terror frequency. Of course, it's filling up, but still weak, and we need to be doing better and better for that. And this way we develop here a terahertz frequency. Uh, we use a vector network analyzer. So it's not the one you may use, uh, see before it, um, a terahertz time domain uh, spectroscopy, we use here a continuous light source. So the vector network analyzer here send it out 10, from 10 megahertz to 50 gigahertz, send the microwave come out from that. The black box here, it multiply frequency. So there is a multiply frequency, whatever you have here, like for example, 20 uh, gigahertz, multiply five times, you have 100 gigahertz. So, and oh, of course, anti, we can multiply anti by terahertz frequency, depending on what type of sort you want to have here. Right, so this, it means the system I show you here is a continuous laser, it not uh, terahertz continued light source is not post light source. So that's why we can have high, very nice signal to know. And I can talk soon about that. And even that we I, we talk, we design special sample, uh, sample cell to measure the absorption uh, by molecule based smog on top of strong absorption of water like I talked before. Right, so that's why I'm talking about how, why we can do it. Right? So you can see right now here, there is a time domain system, and many people have it in the lab, right? or many group, research group have this right now. And of course, you can buy it from uh, several vendors to provide their time domain, but typically the dynamic range about 60 to 7 dB. So that's really extremely good because 60 to 70 is super good. But however, uh, the strong absorption, like I mentioned before, it very much challenging to use the terahertz time domain. But we have, we developed the terahertz time domain up to about 120 dB. And that's why make us, uh, uh, the, the, the situation, uh, give us a situation we can measure with very high precision. Whatever we can we, they detect here, we know very well what's going on because we have high dynamic range of the system with the one I showed you a few seconds ago. Right, and then with this one, even with high dynamic range, we also want to use uh, the potential from that. So we do here, uh, we want to measure the absorption coefficient of course, reflective index, how well we can do it, right? So of course, you know that when uh, we want to measure absorption coefficient, it means we need to know the intensity before the sample and uh, this one after the sample, and of course you this uh, BS law of course should be minus, uh, could, <laughs> and this absorption coefficient multiplied with the thickness. So if you measure uh, the arrow bar from the thickness tiny nanometer or something like that, you can get big easy with absorption coefficient. So in order to do it, we develop a variable path length sample cell. 
So we, because it's a liquid and then of course soft bacterium, so that we can easily change the thickness of those and that's why we can measure the, the absorption coefficient as a function of the thickness or we change it here from thickness. Right. Also, at the same time, the system I mentioned before, we can measure at the same time two things. OK, so let me show you the figure, uh, the, the picture from how it looked like. And then, uh, yeah, we, we published some several years ago. And then we can measure also precisely the temperature of the water. So remember, because when you change one degree, so like simple in the room, one degree, but the absorption coefficient change about 3%. Wow, this this normally maybe not a big deal, but we, we can it, it means it really challenge when you want to see the small chain of biomolecule uh, in the aqueous solution. And then right, so like I mentioned before, when we change the thickness of the sample, and then of course intensity has to follow the Beer's law, and of course indeed it's just like straight line here. When you fit this one, you can get absorption coefficient precisely, not only one. Normally you need a one point if you know precisely the thickness, but in this case we don't need to know the thickness of the sample, so we can vary this one and we can fit this one. We can get absorption coefficient. And secondly, we talk uh, at the same time, right? Uh, and then we can measure the phase shifted after the sample. When it's phase shifted, and then this one, we're talking about unwrapped phase from that, from this one we measure from 180 minus to plus 180. And then we can unwrap it, we can see the straight line here. When we fit it with a linear uh, equation from log scale here, of course we are a log scale and then linear scale here, we can get absorption coefficient and reflective index with very high precision from that. And that we, um, I would like to say, we're so proud we developed the system I show mentioned it here. It's like uh, we make a high world record system, and so far, it's not no one can compete with this one because it's so high. First of all, high dynamic range, and secondly, we use a variable variable part length sample cell, so we can measure any very very value we have it very precisely, high precisely. Uh, accuracy, okay? So that's why we say, okay, so why we can measure it with uh, aqueous solution. So I show you for, so today is a myoglobin solution. So you can, first of all, you can see here a green part. Uh, a green part here, it means the water at 25 Celsius. When you put the myoglobin inside the solution, like two more millimolar until about 15 millimolar, but of course we can measure even higher because you can see here between them, you can see more if you zoom in, so we can measure it uh, micromolar, it's very low concentration of, uh, of uh, biomolecule in solution. Right, so, and of course, at the same time, I have a reflective index. Let me get a cup of water. Yeah, so with this one, we can easily measure absorption and reflective index. Right. So and uh, and how we can learn about that, right? So uh, so from and then of course at the same time I mentioned before we can measure the temperature of the solution precisely with error by about 0 0.02 Celsius. It means it, it, oh, it's very small, right? One degree, but I, we measure about. 0 0.02 degree in error bar. So it's very high precision with the system we have developed so far. Right. So we learn about the temperature, uh, the absorption coefficient, and reflective index as a function of frequency, as a terahertz frequency or megahertz to terahertz frequency, and also with temperature changes for, for those ones. So you can see briefly, as you can see, in, when you in, increase the temperature, this one is uh, absorption increases with temperature, yeah, because the more active in water, more also less strongly, and the same thing, reflective index also changes. But if I come back to the concentration here, uh, with only 25 Celsius, uh, water about green and then uh, high concentration become yellow. So it means when you put protein inside, the absorption of solution reduced. And that's why uh, we you see immediately the absorption of protein is much weaker compared with water. That's, that you can see why like that. Right, so now we learn, we, we can measure absorption coefficient and reflective index. I combine it into a complex function. It means we're talking complex index of refraction. So this is a real part, reflective index. This is an imaginary part. It is, we're talking extinction coefficient or related to absorption coefficient with this formula. 
And the other one, we're talking about complex dielectric function. So this is a real part and an imaginary part. So maybe you already learn from, uh, or you know very well with the Taylor time domain, they always be talking about complex dielectric functions. And of course, when you know one, we can convert, if you know the absorption coefficient and reflective index, you can easily calculate the complex dielectric response and then the other way around. So that would mean I would like to mention about, we can easily uh, learn about this one if we know both information, reflective index and absorption coefficient. And with this one, we're talking about complex dielectric function, epsilon of the material or, or the uh, solution. Right, so let me show you what we're working on. So we convert from the absorption and the reflective index into here the real part, and this one uh, imaginary part, right? So uh, of course, real part it have function like this one, and then the dielectric loss, the uh, epsilon double prime, we have this one, right? And then we can, you, as you can see right now, the maximum absorption of uh, water, 20, uh, 25 room temperature, green part, about 20 gigahertz. That's why the maximum motion of uh, water in the aqueous solution, right? And then when you put the protein inside uh, and or macro molecule, macro molecule inside, the the, the the dielectric loss here reduce until about 15 millimolar. So max go quite quickly reduce here. Yeah, like I talked before, when you put a protein inside, lower absorption of the solution. And that makes you, know, you understand about that. However, look at the low frequency. The story is not the same like you see. It's just like low absorption of uh, protein. Okay, so why here it can be higher at low frequency, right? So it means we need to figure it out. And it, indeed, this one I can answer you quickly. This one due to the water, it's not a bug water anymore. It is bound or, or interact with the surface of biomolecule stuck there and it becomes a part of biomolecule and they not rotate like they, they slower Right, this water molecule at low, some water molecule slower compared with the bug water, and that's why you have more here and lower here at some level from the from the water. Right. So in order to understand about that, uh, I already mentioned before, when interact with water with uh, with protein or macromolecule, when we have a tiny bow, I'm talking about. Uh, uh, tiny bow, TB, tiny bow, and loosely bow uh, because the further outside from the surface or as a surface with weaker interaction. And then could, you have buckwater eye outside here, blue color here. And then that corresponding to that have dielectric response from each component. Right, so that's why I'm right down here, the whole story. The first one, epsilon infinity, it means uh, uh, the contribution at very, very high frequency, uh, uh, like more than terahertz frequency, very high frequency. And then uh, epsilon, uh, here protein and hydrogen shell, it means you can consider this one, it can rotate. This we're talking about protein tumbling, and this one protein is very big, and it means heavy, and uh, that's why tumbling or rotating is slow, it's about one, small, lower than one megahertz, and we do not focus on this one, so because tumbling was interesting, but I, I think it maybe when we have time, we can focus on that. But the one I'm focusing in here, it means a tiny bar of water. So, okay, so this one, this one. So the tiny bar of water is the one with the yellow color here. And this is a contribution from the dielectric response because it's much slower than the bug water and even slower than the, the loosely bar water later on. So that we hear contribution of the dielectric complex function you see I mentioned before, right? And then of course, later on, I'm talking about loosely bar water, but still this water molecule still can send the Coulombic potential or of the present of, uh, by molecule, but it's weaker, much weaker. So this we call loosely bar water. Of course, you can tell me you have more. I totally agree with you, we can have many more, but I would like to make sure here two kind of much story simple, uh, like tiny bar, loosely bar, of course you can have in between, and then that's why the rotation will be more complicated. And then, and then of course, further on that, we're talking about bug water, that's why this one, all the way you can see it, when you just take a cup of water, you can, can measure it easily with the system we have. And then of course, it's supposed to be 20 gigahertz, and then the microwave should be Two gigahertz outside here. If you put, uh, if you use a microwave at home, about twenty gigahertz, you can melt or you can burn the first surface. You cannot get the compact uh, the penetration depth is not further, so you cannot warm the, 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 the cup of milk, for example. So that's why we need to use about two gigahertz instead of twenty gigahertz for the microwave at home. 
right? And then, of course, because if my solution has some kind of contamination like iron, uh, and of course, iron will interact with my molecule, which is taking you to a kind of here's of ionic conductivities. Uh, and of course, and finally, at high frequency, at third frequency, we can learn about the collective motion from that one. So this, of course, is not symmetry because this one, it has multiple mode, harmonic motion mode, is that's why I, 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 I plot here look like R F not or F uh, not not symmetry. So this collective motion will combine uh, uh, many, many modes coming out from that. Right, so with this one, and then to learn about that, that's why you see uh, many is a model here. I'm talking about the bi model. These are the bi based on the relaxed rotation, the rotation process. And Lorenzian, we're talking about collective motion or vibrational. So right now, the Lorenzian model, you can get this uh, harmonic motion. It should be some of multiple harmonic motion from here. And uh, yeah, so we, we use this model. We do work in several papers some, some time ago. All right, so let me go to see, talk about what's going on with an example protein I'm taking for today is uh, myoglobin, uh, right? Myoglobin, this, uh, right. So myoglobin, I, I started, first of all, uh, I start here with a 20 Celsius, right? With 20 Celsius, I measured it as a black, we measured it, not mine, because my student to do it. So the black one is uh, measurements, and we decompose it into three components. Indeed, you cannot do one, because one, it has to be this one. If you have decomposes into three components, it works nicely. That's why the red curve is following exactly the fitting from we have done, right? So with this one here, the, the orange color corresponding to the tiny bar water, the dark blue here corresponding to the loosely bar water, and then of course the blue color here is supposed to be just above water at 20 bigger uh, frequency, right? And then. And now we can count it, right? Because this was the more the one we get it out from the fitting here based on the one we have here. Uh, let me let me load it out one more here. Yeah, so um, so so uh, so with the, so first of all, we know how many water we put in the solution, right? Because uh, we we make a solution, we know how how much uh, water we added in. So that's why we're talking about idea of bulk water. We, we we know precisely and we can calculate it uh, with when we know at, at twenty five Celsius the dielectric strength. However, like when I do it. Clearly, you see it's lower, right? And then, of course, this one's the one we get fitting, get it out here. This corresponding to the one we measure. The difference between that, I'm talking about hydration effect. So this water molecule not uh, oscillate at 20 gigahertz anymore. It oscillates slower in, in the tiny bow layers, uh, contribute tiny bow layer, dielectric respond or loosely bow here. So with this one, we can calculate how many water molecule per one, because it's linearly, if you subtract it quite linearly, but of course later on it come up again. So it's about, we predict or we get it out here, 1,000 uh, and 15 water molecule per one myoglobin. So they include both the loosely bound and tiny bound water. Right, so and then after that we say, okay, so what's going on with high concentration? We change this, this one, this should be one concentration and then we change the concentration. From low concentration, it's uh, about 1,000 water molecule. And then if you have higher concentration, like 15 millimolar, become smaller, about 800 and so forth. And this one, because the, 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 the hydrogen shell starting merge or they, they merge each other, so that's why the, that's why the number of water molecule will be lower when in high concentration of myoglobin in the aqueous solution. And of course, this one is very important message because we know how how the hydration shell structure has been changes. And of course, in the cell, we have very crowded a lot of water instead, uh, a lot of uh, other things and less water. So it means high concentration is very important for the research, how we can figure out what kind of water there and the function from that one. But it's the next step for future. But I'm talking here only for protein in the solution, in the water aqueous solution. Right, so now we say, okay, so to convince you what I'm doing, so I have uh, the black curve, we, we made the black curve here, we subtract the water away, and that's why we can get it out here. The, uh, depending on the con temperature, it can be 25 Celsius, blue one, and orange color for 55. This is no bug water. Right, and then uh, we take it off, we subtract this away, and that's why we can have a loosely bound here and tiny bound here. It shows you clearly have two peaks 
uh, not cannot be a one pick. And that's why we can learn, okay, so we understand what's going on with the loosely bound tiny bound water around by molecule in general. And then we learn about that. And I, I want to point it out clearly in detail what's going on here. So that we measure with the hydration effect, I just tell a few seconds before, at 25 Celsius. And after that, we can see what the, the pitch, the, the maximum, the pitch position, it's moving with the concentration. And as you can see here, typically for the buck water, it's all the way about 8 picosecond, 8.25, all the way like that. Uh, it's the, the maximum peak. And then, of course, at the same time, the tiny bow, loosely bow, about the uh, tiny bow water uh, oscillate about 600 picoseconds and loosely bow about 37 or 40 picoseconds. So that way we can see, and then it not changing significantly com with the concentration. And corresponding to that, we also know uh, how about the contribution from each process, from uh, this one from loosely bound uh, contribution, uh, dielectric response, and this contribution from loosely bound. Of course, at high concentration, you see again, because it's a bending, it's not linear anymore, it's bending down because uh, the hydrogen shell start to merge uh, uh, each other. So that's why you can see the, 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 the bending from the, the dielectric con contribution. Right, so, and then we learn about that. So let me go to the next step about temperature, right? So uh, the same thing with the water. So I, I sh I'll show you here right now about 10 millimolar microbial solutions. And uh, and of course, uh, this one, dialectic, uh, uh, the real part and this imaginary part. And uh, and of course, uh, the dialectic loss all the way, easy to explain. Of course, this one is following the map from that, right? So at five Celsius, it's the peak is uh, at 25 somewhere here, but at lower temperature, the peak is moved to the uh, low frequency. It means water molecule become slow down, not active you know, compared with high concentration. You can see here 25 more even high temperature. We can measure this from uh, I think 95 because uh, if you go further than that, we can get bubble. So that way we avoid bubble and go up to very low temperature, like zero and a good minor 20 Celsius because water not frozen at zero, where if you have very good system. And this way we're talking about um, uh, super cool liquid uh, of the property of water. So uh, I show you here only five to 55, but actually we can we measure from minus 20 to plus 95 Celsius of the aqueous solution with biomolecule. And then corresponding to this one, the dielectric real, the, the real part, uh, epsilon uh, prime here, and then the black curve for low temperature, and then high temperature become, uh, the, this one become lower, uh, the, the maximum here lower because the uh, active uh, um, water molecule become freely compared with low, uh, low temperature water, be, uh, prefer to making a stronger connection with hyd hydrogen bond. Right, so with this one, and do the same method like I mentioned before with the Dubai uh, oscillation. So with this one, we, we know that this one is idea of water, the blue part, and this one, the one we measure, the dielectric response as a function of temperature for 10 millimolar microbial solution. Right, so the difference between that, again, this one hydration effect, if you're taking 25, is somewhere here, but only two point, one point, but the other one we can see a concentration dependent. Right. From this one, we also can calculate the, um, the number of high water uh, in the hydrogen shells in general, both uh, the loosely bound and the tiny bound. So it's changing typically from 1,000 go to high, like 800 at a higher temperature because at high temperature, water prefer go away from the surface or the columbic potential become weaker because active of the uh, activation of water at higher temperature. Right, so in that way, let me explain a little bit about super cool liquid, like I mentioned before. We can measure it from minus 18 Celsius, uh, from minus 18, and go up to high temperature. So that way, you can see right now, it looks like liquid, but it suddenly started to become frozen quickly, and you can do it in the freezer. It's no, not easy, uh, not difficult at all. Just so take very few water and don't shake it. Just put gently in the freezer, and then you can have this situation. Right, this, we're talking super cool liquid. Water do not, uh, frozen or do not become ice at zero, but even you can keep it lower. But however, depending how, depending, uh, it's very fast when you have below like like minus uh, 30 Celsius and so forth, right? So, okay, so with this one, we measure 
uh, the solution, the microbial solution as a function of temperature, we can measure up to about minus uh, 10 because 18 we can do probe also, right? So with this one, we can have here the relaxation of time as a function of the inverse temperature. This one, this side means lower temperature. This one should be high temperature. And then at uh, roughly this one is 10, I think 10 cents, 10, um, uh, 25 cents Celsius somewhere here, and it lower temperature. The way when with this point we can fit it with uh, with only this formula we're talking about um, glassy transition, and of course this uh, not the same like a, like a Henry Wood plot. So this one is T not here corresponding to the uh, glassy transition, and of course this one following this way and then only measure the the, the, the water, so the glassy transition about 136 Kelvin or minus 137 Celsius, that temperature would become frozen, really frozen. Before that still can be some sort of super cool liquid like you see here, but the, above this one is time very short, maybe microsecond, microsecond, it's very short in order to do it. But minus 18, we can do about an hour without any issue if you do nicely from that. Right, so when we do it, we fit the same story. The, the, this formula, we can only use this formula, and we get it out here. The, the, the T naught, the transition, the glassy transition, about 132 Kelvin. We quite look closely with what we observe here because uh, we don't have enough point from the low temperature. Right, so now what's going on with the relaxation of time from the loosely bound water and then also tiny bound water? Right, so first of all, I'm talking about the loosely bound water, the loosely bound water also bending upward, and then uh, we also can fit this few point here correspond with the, with the same formula with the glassy transition, and then we got uh, another number, 11, 111 Kelvin. And of course, because this way we always talk about we have two kinds of water, so not only one kind of water. Like, Longly, we have like high density ice and low density ice, and at the same time, at room temperature, we also have a kind of high density of water and low density of water because the hydrogen bond is just very complicated. And of course, however, what's going on with the tiny bar water? The tiny bar water is making arouse around the, uh, the protein, and it cannot follow because it look like you can see straight line here. It do not follow the formula with the glassy transition uh, transition here, and it follow exactly with the formula of uh, Henry Wood. You see a Henry Wood uh, plot uh, formula from here. And with this, what we can see it water do not frozen uh, even uh, only very very low temperature can be glass uh, can be become crystal or eye right so and then that's why you can see here the crossing point here between the uh, tiny bulk water and then the bulk water tell you the number so at this temperature really start the all water around cell by molecule become frozen and it means actually the tiny bulk water protect the surface of uh, a protein in general or the cell or, or, of the cell in general so that way we can learn oh it's just a very very nice story if you're talking about the correlation between the uh, water and then the tiny bowel um, water from here right so i talk uh, we learn about we learned about the low frequency. We learned the dynamics of water molecule around bi molecule, protein in general, uh, loosely bound, tiny bound, and a good bulk water that is a function of uh, temperature also. Now, I talk one step further about high frequency. And this one we learn about collective motion. We learn about dynamic bi molecule. And then the first thing we're talking about how we can learn uh, between the protein in aqueous solution. First of all, I have water, right? So this water, we're talking about dielectric host. Is it homogeneous? We put protein inside, I call it here inclusion, and then it makes the, the solution become inhomogeneous. However, we can consider this one like effective, uh, like homogeneous medium. If we, if we use a light, smaller wavelength of the light, uh, longer than the size of the inclusion. So the dipole or the protein here much have to be smaller than the wavelength. Wow, that indeed because the size uh, protein about nanometer, but the wavelength here we're talking even visible hundred nanometers. But my uh, terahertz we have much um, uh, longer, and of course that's why I explain to you how colorful from the church because I will, I got my PhD in Amsterdam, and then I so I love Europe because Europe have a lot of beautiful church, a lot of nice uh, uh, building. But uh, in the US, we have less than that. <laughs> and that's why I really like to size this uh, picture, one of them. Uh, of course, it's nanometer, it's not, uh, it not biomolecule, but the same story. 
And then with this one, uh, if we use a effective medium to understand how light interacts with the protein inside, right? So we have two models to learn about that. The first one I'm talking about uh, uh, Maxwell Garnet model. This is a Maxwell Garnet model. Here is the the air, the dielectric, uh, the, the volume fraction, how, how the volume of protein inside the solution is small. This is a Maxwell Garnet model. Another model we can use is the Brookman model, and we can vary the, the concentration of protein from zero to one. So that's good because we can get very low concentration, like micro micro, uh, micro molar or up to about millimolar. We can use it. Right. So, and of course, the point that I mentioned before, what this uh, the yellow sphere here corresponding to the uh, bare protein, like protein without any hydration. And however, the tiny bar of water will be stuck there. It cannot move easily as a terahertz frequency is stuck there. And that's why making the tiny bar layer and or hydration shell. And that's why we call right now, this one is not protein anymore. We're talking hydrated protein. So it means we can learn it from the collective motion of the hydrated protein and the tiny bar layer. And also we can figure out from the app here, the volume of the tiny bar uh, water. So that's why we can, before we learn over some of those, some of the tiny bar, loosely bar, but now we can learn single of them, how much in the tiny bar layer. Right, so that's why we can do use a Brookman model, and we measure the dielectric response of water. That's uh, measure water itself, and then we measure the uh, dielectric response of solution. And uh, following that, we can predict from here and uh, uh, function from that. And we can learn this the dielectric response of hydrated myoglobin or protein. I'm talking in general. Right, so with this one, we can show. I'm showing you here. So of course, this one I, I tell you a few seconds before about the Dubai model decomposes into the three components. But this one is a collective motion of bi molecule at terahertz frequency, and uh, and this one tell you about how the collective motion or vibrational dynamic of bi molecule. And of course, it depending on the temperature. So at five Celsius, it is lower. Because you can see from here, and when you go, we go to the 25 Celsius, it starts to become higher and even higher for at 20, 55 Celsius. That will tell you about higher, higher, higher temperature, the, uh, the protein more active or, 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 or active more than the frozen or, or low temperature here. And of course, at a certain moment, protein become unfolded or denaturing. It's not like uh, by, by protein itself. So it means at 25, that's why we say, oh, 25 is maybe the best from that. Right. So we, we, we can figure out here how terahertz frequency interact with hydrated, yeah, I mentioned hydrated myoglobin in, you know, so, uh, molecule. Right. And of course, with this one, we also learn here about 225 water molecule per one microbial. This only for a tiny bar layer because this one is water molecule stuck there like a part of bi molecule. It's not easily go out like loosely by water or, or some other uh, buck water. So this one we can learn also how many water in a strong longer lifetime stay on the surface, about 300 or 600 picoseconds, almost one nanoseconds. And also we learn about collective motion of the hydrated microbial. Right, so with this one, we say, okay, so now why one step further, and we would like to confirm or compare our data with uh, uh, molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, we are working in a Gromax and use a uh, water model SPCE, and uh, depending on, we use a gem uh, fossil fuel, and of course, uh, time we set it up here. And first of all, we learn about what's going on with water first, the same like I mentioned before. And this one correlation function as a function of time. And if you see it going down here quickly, uh, and then it starts to red like that, and depending how thick we can get it out. So this one about at the maximum in the second, with the first layer, second layer, and so forth. And that's why we had to integrate for long, further outside from the surface of protein. For more on this one, and in short, I put a lot of calculation here, but in short, I uh, we can learn here, we have 210 water molecule in a tiny bar layer. So it's just longer compared, this is just why the function here longer compared with other one. And then of course we can calculate or, or 
it's right here. How many water in the hydrogen shells? Typically about, we can get for this molecule, right? Depending on bigger molecule will be bigger. So for myoglobin, about 1100 water molecule around the myoglobin. And hemoglobin, we have about 4,000, roughly factor four larger than that. And tiny about, uh, tiny about water is about uh, 500 or 200, uh, oh, sorry, 500, I don't have, I don't show you here, but for 500 water molecules a tiny bound layer because it's bigger and then structure slightly different compared with myoglobin, even though we're talking the heme group. Right, when we learn about that, also we calculate the uh, collective motion or collective vibration here of hydrated myoglobin. And you can see here, we can calculate the backbone uh, and then the side train. And of course, some of those we have a whole protein and compare this one with the one we measure here. And then of course we can see like two, roughly one main peak and another main peak, but I call this one it like, like, like uh, big, uh, like, um, one kind of motion mode from the motion mode and corresponding to 25, we can get globally lower, you know, slightly lower compared with this frequency. Right, so we learn it from the uh, MD simulations and how the myoglobin work from that. And then, uh, of course, uh, I, uh, we have done several work and, uh, and of course, one another example I have done, we have done here for DNA. Right, DNA is just very more challenged compared with protein. DNA long train of amino, uh, sorry, long uh, uh, the helix, uh, the double helix here, and then the, and then the molecule very large, about two hundred uh, base pair, a uh, two thousand base pair, what we have measure, and then the concentration we can measure about eight or eighteen micromolar because a lot of water forming hydrogen shell about uh, about um, around around DNA here. And of course, with this one, we can uh, uh, we can learn about the the collective motion of, band of DNA at the terahertz frequency, and we can learn how many water around single base pair. I think we have fit or 45 or 48 water molecule per one base pair because we can calculate it from number of water are missing from that. So that's public last year. And of course, I repeat quickly also what we have done also for intrinsic disorder protein. And with this one, we can see those uh, uh, IDP protein. And we learn also from that. If you are, and of course, water is very strong, uh, very sensitive for IDP uh, uh, intrinsic uh, disorder protein here very, very strongly. So that's why I show you where we can, where can, we can learn about how water and IDP in, uh, protein interaction and of course the collective motion from this one. And I think that brings me my, to my conclusion. Uh, so we develop a sensitive terahertz, actually megahertz to terahertz dielectric spectroscopy from 10 megahertz to of course, three terahertz here because we also have in our lab uh, terahertz time domain. Of course, we can we try to get further from the from the vector network analyzer doing the same, but we need to get uh, some another funding to get money to buy to, to keep going develop on this one because quite expensive for one of the system we have here. And the, oh, should be uh, the dynamic rate up to 120 dB. And of course, we measure at the same time the real and the imaginary or the absorption reflective index of the material. And of course, we can measure a large range of the concentration. And I don't talk about iron today, but I'm willing to share with you uh, what we are doing with iron. And uh, uh, hydration la layers, we can figure out here two kinds of water molecule, the tiny bar and loosely bar water. And of course, that I, I mentioned before, uh, the, the color coming out from the picture here. And this confirmed what we can measure it, do it with the MD simulation. And at the tail frequency, we can learn this one is due to the multiple harmonic oscillation, because this each peak here corresponds one kind of oscillation between the system. And, uh, and of course, uh, using the MD simulation, we say, okay, look quite very well when we use uh, uh, molecular dynamics like Glomax uh, uh, to, to calculate it out. And of course, this work, had, um, I don't do any of this work, and uh, all students working on the project, and uh, and then they, they do the measurements. And of course, the calculation, the uh, uh, person here for calculation, taking uh, help for the calculation. And the funding, uh, I would like to say, for US uh, Air Force and NSF to make it uh, happen. However, let me go to in detail. Uh, just one slide to talk about uh, all what I'm do doing here. And uh, I'm willing to talk any of those if you're interested, any tip or single 
question here. And the next one I is just talking about, we also develop a biosensor. One of them we talk, uh, we learn about the photoreceptors. So we have typically six uh, photoreceptors and sensitive with light. And, uh, and that's why we can send, do it. And then with this one, we use a graphene uh, to make a de uh, divide few effect transistor here, and we can uh, put a solution of uh, micro, uh, 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 I'm, I'm focused here, photoactive uh, yellow protein or PYP proteins. And then I put it in a PYP protein in here, we can measure sensitivity from that. So the PYP, that's why yellow color, because absorbed at 450 nanometers is not absorption. And we use a device we just developed right now with a few effect transistor graphene in between here. And we can measure this uh, very low concentration from that. I, uh, my student don't write down here, but it's about, we can measure about failure indeed here, 511 or 35 femtomolar of uh, PYP in the solution. So with uh, depending on the line, because we, we shine exactly 450, we can see it, or from that like 500 and 600, we don't see it. But the black curve here is unchappy water because water also sensitive with the system we have. But anyways, it's a baseline. You see black one is baseline impurity. So we develop right now also a biosensor to detect very low concentration of the photoactive biomolecule or any biomolecule with sensitive with light because of the structure we develop uh, with that. Of course, and then I just, just uh, show you, we have not only limited, but we also doing like, like nano laser, nano wire and so forth. Okay, so Laza closed my talk and uh, I'm very happy to answer any question if you have, and uh, I'm very happy to talk with uh, you. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. much. Brilliant. 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 Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> so we have, one, we have one, uh, some, some questions, questions coming, coming in. in. Yes, please. I see, I see Galileo. Galileo. Let me uh, allow your mic and allow your Pamela, so Cindy, you can try to unmute yourself and ask a question. Okay, good afternoon, Bing. Uh, <clears throat> I have one question regarding the hydration properties. How can you explain that increasing the concentration of your solute, in this case, uh, myoglobin, you don't have any change in the relaxation time of the salt water? Mm -hmm. So, so you ask uh, the question is so the concern the, the relaxation of time do not change right that was the question or you talking about how it increasing the magnitude increasing or what is it? yes or, since you are increasing since you are increasing the concentration of your solute your myoglobin yeah, yeah. you don't have any change in the con in the relaxation time how can you explain that no it, yes that's right so we don't see it changes, but uh, of course, because uh, it's slightly here, la larger arrow bar, because we use here three decomposes. So I see the point. If you, but of course, first of all, I'm talking about the, the loser about the, 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 the tiny bow, uh, the, the, the bug water itself first. So I can give you an example about what you measure. Okay, here, Wait, too fast, too fast, too fast. Right, you see right now here, uh, the maximum pitch do not change with concentration. That's the first point. So this one is the bug water, right? The bug water not changing with concentration. And then of course, because the point that we decompose it into a three component, and that's why in more detail you can get see this is what I would like to say. Of course, if you say, uh, if you take one, right? If you consider the orange color, one pitch, I totally agree with you because you start from here and then of course the arrow bar will be larger and then that's why you can get a picture sheet. It's, I hope I can convince you this point. Because it, depending on the way you fit, if you you take only one component, the, the bi model, and then I fit it, and of course, because you can get larger arrow bar, but however, it can give you something. But here, I, we do it in detail. We decompose this into three components and get it out from each component. And that's why different compared with other one. I, I, I think I understand the question from other ones. They say the relaxation of time of what it changes. But if you put more, you can get better fit, and then that way I can try to give you another phenomena coming out from here. Is it? Uh, I hope I answer your question, or you don't do not convince you. Yes, yes. I, I have another question. How did you calculate the hydration numbers? Uh, where can I get this information? So, okay, so let me, uh, uh, let me go to this part. So I have two kinds of calculation here. The first one 
Yes, yeah, so the first one, uh, we know well, very well, how many water we added in, right? Because we put protein inside and then you have less water. So that's why the dielectric response per volume, is it volume? It will be lower. So that's why we know that it's an ideal bug water by itself. So that's what we have. And however, when you see the peak is lower, when you feed it and you get the, the dielectric response for bug water here, the delta bug water here, that actually uh, should be D. Yeah. So water here and they are lower. And then of course there's a lower here tell you about water it not oscillate as this frequency anymore. This water molecule move another one and that's why I go to the lower frequency here. And I we call tiny bar and loosely bar water. And that's why we can calculate here the total water molecule moving away from the bulk water. Right? So that's why you can do it. And of course from this one, you can use a magnitude from the ratio of magnitude. You can, can predict it out, but uh, we can do another one more precisely. Exactly what can, uh, can do it means we use a effective medium theory to consider water as a, a, a tiny bow layer because stuck there and not go away. That's why we consider that like tiny bow water. Of course, you can use a magnitude, the one you see from here. Yeah, so so. So, so you can, the magnitude here, you can calculate, you can extract from that, but maybe it's still not precise, but I prefer use the effective medium theory to calculate it. So of course, like another example I can show you here, the black curve, I minus uh, take another step, take off the bulk water away from the one we fit here, we can see more clearly two contribution, and of course can be tiny bar, and for sure, lose the layer of water around by molecule. So you have two picks, that's why we uh, show you here. It, you can see by eye, cannot be one pick. And of course, it, if you say more, okay, I have more in between tiny bar, lose the layer I say, yes, you're quite right. However, because if you separate more and more, it'd be difficult for us to say what's going on here. And that's why we use uh, the MD to predict this one. And uh, yeah, so, so I hope I, I, I answer you the question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, very nice question. And of course, it was the most challenging part. And <laughs> a very, very nice question for that. Thanks. I have can I, maybe I can have a question myself. Yes, um, please. So that's first very interesting. I would have, of course, plenty of methodical questions I could have, but maybe I'll start <laughs> with the one um, which is what I was most curious about. Uh, one of the last slides when you've been showing the subterahertz spectra of myoglobin, which you assign to vibration modes. Uh, that was probably the, maybe the little later slide. Yes, this one. Great. So you you show there um, these vibrational density of states. Uh, so this what you see well, on the top. That's from the molecular dynamic simulations, right? Yes. So then you can easily dis distinguish the backbone and side chest and so on. So I'm wondering there. Um, the peak which you see, it's roughly, well, it's broad peak, if to say, it's around 800 gigahertz. You're uh, talking about MD, right? MD, yeah, the top peak, yeah. the, the yeah. graph. So these 800 gigahertz, is it, uh, can you assign it to any particular um, modes? Think... Probably will be many modes, right? Or how, how do you interpret that peak? Oh, oh, how can you? So, so, yes, that's very, uh, interesting question. How is this uh, pick come out? Yes, yeah, so that's why because when we can only can separate the side side trends and backbone, and could, because this one, yeah, you quite I yeah I should talk. Uh, we should talk. So question need to be seen more in the simulation with uh, with the M. Uh, uh, yeah, so with more detail, what kind of part of you mean about the uh, the helixes here oscillate? What is also question like that? But I don't. I, I cannot answer you right now. But I can answer you later on if you want to know what's the peak here corresponding to what kind of collect of the individual uh, uh, helixes here or individual um, this one come out. So uh, I think in general we just see it. But uh, yes, I can answer you if you wish to know about that. Yeah, well, maybe we could discuss that uh, also later. Yes, so it's, yes. It's, I, yes. Yeah. Okay, it's very because, interesting though to see yeah. any spectral features in that. So no, here but, in this MD, sorry if I may to follow up follow questions. So there um, you do not consider any water in this VDOS, it's just, uh, just the protein. No, this hydrated already. With all yeah, in the MD, right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So the MD already included water in order yes. to compare it because to, sure. to be fair, <laughs> if you don't uh, don't have a water around, you cannot. It's no fair to compare it, right? Because we sure, I mentioned sure. the whole thing. So it is. Yeah, you have a hydration layer around that, and with the one I just mentioned before, this uh, uh, this one, the tiny bar already included because from the simulation only we take off the uh, the the, the water away to get this information. Yes. Yeah. Very nice question. Yeah. Okay. Indeed. I see, and thanks very much. And uh, for I have a question also for the graph below the experimental data. So <clears throat> I understand that since you are getting these, uh, yeah, the one which you are showing now, uh, I understand that uh, you can get this um, dielectric loss and 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 the dispersion, so the imaginary and the real part of the complex permittivity. Yeah, you can get it via subtracting the contributions of all the other things of uh, let's say rotational tumbling of the protein. Tightly bound, loosely bound water and, and uh, bulk water as well. Uh, maybe some <laughs> ions, but they probably don't play much role here in these frequencies. And then you get this one. So it means yeah. you have to subtract around three to four fitted curves. So I would be curious, you know, I, I can understand this is quite sensitive to the way how you fit those curves because yeah. you are using those to subtract, subtract them from the, let's say, raw data. Right, so I'm wondering about these shapes of the curve. So would you would you expect them to be smooth? For example, the one for the 55 degrees Celsius, there is a dip at around uh, 90 gigahertz. So is this real or just artifact of the fitting uh, I, that you have to subtract? I can answer you. I don't think you're a real one <laughs> because some guy by eye you can see it, but I still within an arrow bar. I think it should be larger arrow bar than the one. I think because you plot. Point. So in many points here. So I don't. Uh, I don't think it's a real sharp edge here at all. So so the sharp edge is very sensitive, right? So I think it's some sort of because uh, the, the when you measure because it's quite small. It's a very very small compared with water. The collective motion and even we have very high sensitivity. Uh, there are time domains spectroscopy, but still I don't say this is a really a real pick about this pick or this. It can be can kind of bump up. I I can mention about that. I don't say a sharp pick here, but I can say some sort of go up uh, with a frequency and flatter after that. I, that's I, I prefer to answer you like that. But many people say, wow, they see a sharp pick. Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't see it because even though it's the best we can do because the tail time domain and other, other one, other technique, uh, because they have less dynamics than us, but they see it, but I think maybe some sort of artifact, some kind of system can produce this one. I don't say they are wrong, but I, I would like to say, I don't know. About okay. yeah, I mean, it's fair to say, I mean, it's, it's very complex in all this procedure. Yes. So uh, I see there is a question from uh, Nisha, Chopra, Nisha Chopra. So if you don't mind, I can, un if you like, I can unmute you. Let me try that. If that otherwise, I can uh, find you. Uh, okay. Hello, Mike. Hello, camera. <laughs> so Nishta, Nishta Chopra, can you, if you like to ask the question yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Oh, great. Uh, thank you for a very nice informative talk. Um, so my question is regarding uh, the statement you made that for a dehydrated sample, there will probably be no hydration shells, uh, but you divided hydration shells into three parts. Uh, bulk water and then the innermost, which is the tightly bound. Yeah. So I was just curious to know that for a dehydrated sample, how do you exactly know that the tight bound shell, which is, which I understood is an intrinsic part of the protein structure, it disappears. Uh, because in the terahertz range, I think the penetration depth would be a little bit higher for a dehydrated sample as compared to a hydrated sample. Uh, so if I uh, uh, understand well, so so you mean the the penetration depth of the inside molecule, or so how how can I define the, the hydration, right? So I mean uh, because when you put it in, so we see it changing with the frequency, so it's a magnitude has been changes, and that why tell us about the hydration uh, level, hydration water, and. Um, and of course, the terahertz in high frequency, I try to separate it out because we need to subtract the hydration cell from that. So 
I'm not so sure. Is it the one question you want to? Um, I basically wanted to know if you've tried measuring dehydrated samples and compared with your hydrated samples and also so, tried using the oh. the the Dubai modeling. So like what sort of uh, do you uh, get uh, double Dubai or single Dubai? What exactly I see, it is? I see. Okay. Yes. So so if we compare with a bear well, protein, of course, we know water. And with this one, we see clearly uh, with this one. Yes, we do see this uh, with our water. Uh, and of course, many publications they show before. And then uh, of course, it's not the same like we observe here. So definitely you don't see the, the, the absorption changing out here. That's what I, I just stopped it here. Okay. Oh, yeah, so you see it. We don't see it with with that. We only see, and of course, this is water in anyway. So the point is because it's with water anyway. So we can we always see it anyway. And of course, we're talking about dielectric response for myself. So we measure dry protein and compare it. So um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's such a good suggestion. But I mean, we have done it, but we don't see any change significant like that because it has to be with water inside. And with this, how to understand that we have to separate into, like you mentioned, three components, bug, high, tiny bar, loosely bar, water. And then with high frequency, we use uh, the, the way to extract it out from the collective motion, uh, from, the, from the rotation process. Okay, great. Just one yeah. last question. So for you, you showed your system. I just want, was curious to know that how do you remove the atmospheric water vapors? Oh, vapor. So, um, because we measure transmission, so uh, we don't have a vapor here at all. Uh, oh, yes, uh, maybe I show you the setup, so that's why maybe you can see easily. Uh, here, directly, no vapor involved. Yes, indeed, if you're talking about the um, time domain, you have a vapor, so so not in this setup I show you today. So this one, the microwave, directly here is a plastic to make sure transparent, so that's, that's the only thing. So the source directly go to the sample, and that's why we can have very high intensity from that. So no vapor, it's not like uh, like, like the time domain, you have the antenna, you have detector, so, but just no vapor at all, you see from that. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks a lot for the question. Well, thank you so much. So great. So uh, how about the, t uh, the time? Are you still available or or, <laughs> for the, or you have to run? I have to run because I have a meeting right now. I That's see. why I try to get 45 minutes. I wish I to see. give you longer. But of course, because uh, I, I wish to talk to you later on, if you really interested in anything, and even if you want to talk another time, we can talk another uh, chat, another topic, because we have not only limited by the water, we have more things than sure. that. So I see you're doing a lot of interesting thing, and then I think I'm happy to answer you later. And any question, please keep in touch, and then I, I'm very happy to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. So I would like to thank you very much. Uh, yeah. It was a great talk. I don't want to hold you too much longer. So thank you again. Thank you. Really great. All. And uh, I also so thank you to the, yeah. all the participants, and definitely we'll keep in touch. And you will all found, find you will find this uh, recording in our yeah. YouTube channel soon. So thank you. Thank you so Dr. much. Win and have a good day. Yeah, yeah, have night evening time because we have morning right now. Oh, <laughs> and yes. it's only uh, the Monday uh, afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.